So you found the perfect speakers for your system. Congratulations. Now you need to power them. You want an amplifier that matches well with the speakers you bought, right? Well, in this video, I'll be going over the different things you must consider when shopping for a new amplifier and how to narrow down the right one for you. Let's get to it. Before we get started, if you'd like to support the channel, I have an online t-shirt shop where I sell hi-fi and audio inspired clothing. Check out the link in the description below and remember your purchases go straight back into the channel and help me make more videos. Now onto the task at hand. I think this is a subject that many have just glazed over instead of explaining things to where someone who has no clue how the amplifier and speaker matching process works can understand and make a proper purchasing decision. Many also think it's all about watts and power. Yes, it's a huge factor that I'll cover and that you should consider, but there are a couple of other things that we are covering here today that will get you where you need to be. The first step is to check your new speaker specifications. The manufacturer will write out this little section on their website in words and acronyms you may not understand, but it will look something like this. So what do you do with this? I mean, at least for me, it looked like hieroglyphics the first time I encountered this little box of science and math. However, the little box will be essential when trying to find an amp for those holy grail speakers you just bought. So we will begin by discussing the speaker's efficiency, which is measured in decibels or dB, if you are reading the, the spec sheet. Companies measure the efficiency of a loudspeaker by placing a microphone one meter from the speaker and then providing the speaker with one watt of power. Let's take these Starks as an example. These speakers have a sensitivity rating of 89 decibels. So if you stand one meter from your speaker and input one watt of power from your amplifier, the results should be 89 decibels of sound. Now, doubling the wattage input into the speaker will result in approximately three decibels of volume increase. In this case, two watts of power results in 92 decibels. Four watts of power will produce 95 and so on and so on. At 10 watts of power, you would be delivering about 99 decibels of volume. That's about as loud as a Boeing 737 one nautical mile away before landing. Always consider that you will lose approximately six decibels of sound every time you double the distance between yourself and the speaker. Usually speakers range in efficiency or sensitivity from about 85 decibels considered very inefficient to about 105 decibels, which is very efficient when measured in decibels. For example, a loudspeaker that measures 94 decibels like the Klipsch RP600M2 doesn't necessarily need a powerful amplifier to fill your room with sound since with around 20 watts of power, you will be able to play them at a reasonable listening volume. This is a big misconception with amplifiers and companies that tout these enormous amounts of watts per channel. It is simply the fact that you will more than likely never listen to or use even half the watts they're rated at. You would probably blow your speakers or your eardrums before reaching that high a wattage. So let's say you bought a speaker with horrible efficiency. Don't worry, this isn't a bad thing per se. You'll have to find an amplifier that can give the speaker the proper power to drive them to their full potential. It may be a bit more expensive, but it's available. Most speaker manufacturers are making their speakers with decent efficiency since most stay within that high 80s to low 90s decibel range. Many audiophiles prefer the sound of tube amplifiers because they have a bit of distortion that causes the feeling of warmth to come across its sonic signature. Most of these low wattage amps like Nelson Pass's first watt SIT 3 only provide 18 watts per channel. However, paired with really efficient speakers, this amplifier can provide a beautiful sound that isn't easily matched by any amplifiers in the industry. At the same time, if you pair this same amplifier with inefficient speakers, it may not play as well as expected because of its limitations in pumping copious amounts of watts and volts into a pair of power-hungry loudspeakers. Let's say you are using the Premier A35.2 power amplifier, which can provide up to 200 watts of power per channel at 8 ohms. I think it is safe to say this amplifier can drive most speakers you would throw its way. Watts and power are very matter of fact and rely on knowing the speaker's efficiency. 
What are ohms? I mentioned ohms earlier because the impedance of a loudspeaker is also something you need to consider when pairing your speakers with an amp. I think of a speaker's impedance like a road that electricity travels down. Impedance is measured in ohms and tells us how much this road resists the electricity flow. When looking at speakers, you'll often see a term called nominal impedance, which is sort of an average resistance value since the actual resistance can change with different sounds or music notes. Most home speakers have nominal impedance of 8, 6, or 4 ohms. Here's an easy way to remember the importance of ohms. The lower the number of ohms, the easier it is for electricity to flow through. But if too much electricity flows through, like connecting a speaker with too low of an ohm rating to an amplifier, it could overload the amplifier. That's bad news bears because it can damage your equipment. So it's super important to check the ohm rating on your speakers and make sure your amplifier can handle it to keep your music playing smoothly and your equipment safe. How many speakers will you be connecting to the new amplifier? That's something I'm assuming you will already know beforehand. I'm hoping. Well, depending on whether you'll be setting up a home theater or just a simple two-channel listening environment. Most basic home theaters will run five speakers and a subwoofer to help recreate a theater-like environment and provide a full-range experience. In this case, you will need to buy an audio-video receiver or AVR. An AVR has many functions and features that will consolidate your entertainment needs into one device. For example, if you have a you know, TV, media streamer, Blu-ray player, and gaming machine, most new AVRs will allow you to connect them via an HDMI cable into your AVR. The receiver will then process the sound and picture, sending the video signal to your you know, flat screen or projector and the audio signal to its internal amplifier, which will power all five speakers. Five speakers are modest for some home theater enthusiasts, I know, but the advent of Dolby Atmos and full surround sound has driven the cinephiles of the world into a feeding frenzy to fit more and more speakers into their environment. However, five speakers are an excellent place to start, and you can always move up from there. The AVR will be your media hub and amplifier for all audio video needs. Suppose you are just running two speakers, primarily for music. In that case, you'll need a two-channel amplifier with enough power and matched nominal impedance to allow your speakers to play at their finest capacity. As if this was not confusing enough for someone starting out, I'm sorry guys. The next step would be to decide what class of amplifier you want to use in your system. There are several classes of amplifiers, however, the most typical are class A, A, B, and D. Class A amplifiers are found more in the realm of high-end home audio. The part of the amplifier responsible for converting the input voltage into output power is always on, making these amplifiers relatively inefficient because whatever voltage they do not use turns into heat. It's constantly consuming energy. It is also the heaviest and most expensive amplifier out of the group. Why is this so sought after by audiophiles? Well, because the sound they produce is considered to be the best quality amongst all classes of amplifiers. If you've never heard a proper class A amplifier, I think you should head on over to like a hi-fi shop or a buddy's house who has one because they do sound pretty damn nice. Class A, B are a bit different, where it is not always off, but not always on. It is a compromise without sacrificing too much of the sound quality of a Class A amp, with better efficiency and lessening the price compared to its Class A counterpart. I did a poll on my community page here on YouTube a long time ago, and 56% preferred Class A, B because of its balance of value and sound quality. Now, Class D amplifiers are becoming a more popular and widely used type of amplifier among the lower priced offerings. Even higher end brands are starting to adopt Class D since its quality has evolved quickly over the years. They are highly efficient, can be you know, made much smaller, lighter, and produce a lot less heat, and are the least expensive. A huge misconception is that Class D stands for digital which it does not. It is just another amplifier class and designation. Over the years, they have evolved into a fantastic sounding option for your sound system, and I imagine we'll see these a lot more often in the coming years in more high-end applications. 
Choosing an amplifier is an important decision because in my experience, they do have different sonic signatures, even within the same power ratings and classes. A company's engineering team will do their best to ensure a pleasant sonic experience, Nonetheless, not all amplifiers are made the same way or designed the same way. This creates slight distinctions in the sound they produce. Some are warm and pleasant, and some can come across as cold or shrill. It's always best to do your due diligence when making your final decision. This can be a purchase that may very well last you decades, like they did in the 70s, you know, and 80s. And they're still circulating in the used market today and work great. So plan for this purchase to be an excellent match for your current speakers, but also future-proof yourself by purchasing an amplifier that can match well with speakers you will likely upgrade to. If you enjoyed the video and got something from it, make sure to take it all the way with the like button. I humbly ask that you subscribe to the channel. We are well on our way to hitting my 50,000 goal for 2024. Every subscription matters and it is greatly appreciated. And ring the bell to get notified every time a new video is born. With all that said and done, I'll see you on the next one, friends. Take care.